Don't just read NCERT. Listen it and feel it. Class 12, Biology, Chapter 5, Principles of Inheritance and Variation, narrated by Varnia Verma. Have you ever wondered why an elephant always gives birth only to a baby elephant and not some other animal? Or why a mango seed forms only a mango plant and not any other plant? Given that they do, are the offspring identical to their parents or do they show differences in some of their characteristics? Have you ever wondered why siblings sometimes look so similar to each other or sometimes even so different? These and several related questions are dealt with scientifically in a branch of biology known as genetics. This subject deals with the inheritance as well as the variation of characters from parents to offspring. Inheritance is the process by which characters are passed on from parent to progeny. It is the basis of heredity. Variation is the degree by which progeny differs from their parents. Humans knew from as early as 8000 to 1000 BC that one of the causes of variation was hidden in sexual reproduction. They exploited the variations that were naturally present in the wild populations of plant and animals to selectively breed and select for organisms that possessed desirable characters. For example, through artificial selection and domestication from ancestral wild cows, we have well-known Indian breeds, example, Sahiwal cows in Punjab. We must, however, recognize that though our ancestors knew about the inheritance of characters and variation, they had very little idea about the scientific basis of these phenomena. 5.1 Mendel's Law of Inheritance It was during the mid-19th century that the headway was made in the understanding of inheritance. Gregor Mendel conducted hybridization experiments on garden peas for seven years. 1856 to 1863 and proposed the laws of inheritance in living organisms. During Mendel's investigations into inheritance patterns, it was for the first time that statistical analysis and mathematical logic were applied to problems in biology. His experiments had a large sampling size which gave greater credibility to the data that he collected. Also, the confirmation of his inferences from experiments on successive generations of his test plants proved that his results pointed to general rules of inheritance rather than being unsubstantiated ideas. Mendel investigated characters in the garden pea plant that were manifested as two opposing traits. Example, tall or dwarf plants, yellow or green seeds. This allowed him to set up a basic framework of rules governing inheritance, which was expanded on by later scientists to account for all the diverse natural observations and the complexity inherent in them. Mendel conducted such artificial pollination or cross-pollination experiments using several true breeding pea lines. A true breeding line is one that having undergone continuous self-pollination shows the stable trait inheritance and expression for several generations. Mendel selected 14 
true breeding pea plant varieties as pairs which were similar except for one character with contrasting traits some of the contrasting traits selected were smooth or wrinkled seeds yellow or green seeds inflated full or constricted green or yellow pods and tall or dwarf plants 5.2 inheritance of one gene let us take the example of one such hybridization experiment carried out by mendel where he crossed tall and dwarf pea plants to study the inheritance of one gene he collected the seeds produced as a result of this cross and grew them to generate plants of the first hybrid generation this generation is also called the filial one progeny or the f1 mendel observed that all the f1 progeny plants were tall like one of its parents none were dwarf he made similar observations for the other pairs of traits he found that the f1 always resembled either one of the parents and that the trait of the other parent was not seen in them mendel then self pollinated the tall f1 plants and to his surprise found that in the filial 2 generation some of the offspring were dwarf the character that was not seen in the f1 generation was now expressed the proportion of plants that were dwarf were one fourth of the f2 plants while three fourth of the f2 plants were tall the tall and dwarf traits were identical to their parental type and did not show any blending that is all the offspring were either tall or dwarf none of them were in between heights similar results were obtained with the other traits that he studied only one of the parental traits was expressed in the f1 generation while at the f2 stage both the traits were expressed in the proportion 3 ratio 1 the contrasting traits did not show any blending at either f1 or f2 stage based on these observations mendel proposed that something was being stably passed down unchanged from parent to offspring through the gametes over successive generations he called these things as factors now we call them as genes genes therefore are the units of inheritance they contain the information that is required to express a particular trait in an organism genes which code for a pair of contrasting traits are known as alleles that is they are slightly different forms of the same gene if we use alphabetical symbols for each gene then the capital letter is used for the trait expressed at the f1 stage and the small alphabet for the other trait for example in case of the character of height capital t is used for the tall trait and small t for the dwarf and capital t and small t are alleles of each other hence in plants the pair of alleles for height would be two capital t's capital t small t or two small t's mendel also proposed that in a true breeding tall or dwarf pea variety the allelic pair of genes for height are identical or homozygous two capital t and two small t respectively two capital t and two small t are called the genotype of the plant while the descriptive terms tall and dwarf are the phenotype what then would be the phenotype of a plant that had a genotype capital t small t as mendel found the phenotype of the f1 heterozygote capital t small t to be exactly like the two capital t's parent in appearance he proposed that in a pair of dissimilar factors one dominates the other 
as in the F1 and hence is called the dominant factor while the other factor is recessive. In this case, capital T for tallness is dominant over small t for dwarfness, that is recessive. He observed identical behavior for all the other characters, trait pairs that he studied. It is convenient and logical to use the capital and lower case of an alphabet symbol to remember this concept of dominance and recessiveness. Do not use capital T for tall and small d for dwarf because you will find it difficult to remember whether capital T and small d are alleles of the same gene character or not. Alleles can be similar as in the case of homozygotes. Two capital T's and two small t's or can be dissimilar as in the case of the heterozygote capital T small t. Since the capital T small t plant is heterozygous for genes controlling one character height, it is a monohybrid and the cross between two capital T's and two small t's is a monohybrid cross. From the observation that the recessive parental trait is expressed without any blending in the F2 generation, we can infer that when the tall and dwarf plant produce gametes by the process of meiosis, the alleles of the parental pair separate or segregate from each other and only one allele is transmitted to a gamete. This segregation of alleles is a random process and so there is a 50% chance of a gamete containing either allele as has been verified by the results of the crossings. In this way, the gametes of the tall 2 capital T plants have the allele capital T and the gametes of the dwarf 2 capital T plants have the allele small t. During fertilization, the two alleles, capital T from one parent, say through pollen, and small t from the other parent, then through the egg, are united to produce zygotes that have one capital T allele and one small t allele. In other words, the hybrids have capital T, small t. Since these hybrids contain alleles which express contrasting traits, the plants are heterozygous. The production of gametes by the parents, the formation of the zygotes, the F1 and F2 plants can be understood from a diagram called Punnett square as shown in figure 5.4. It was developed by a British geneticist Reginald C. Punnett. It is a graphical representation to calculate the probability of all possible genotypes of offspring in a genetic cross. The possible gametes are written on two sides, usually the top row and left columns. All possible combinations are represented in boxes below in the squares, which generates a square output form. The Punnett square shows the paternal tall two capital T's male and dwarf two small T's female plants. The gametes produced by them and the F1 capital T small t progeny, the F1 plants of the genotype capital T small t are self-pollinated. The symbols female and male are used to denote the female eggs and male pollen of the F1 generation respectively. The F1 plant of the genotype capital T small t when self-pollinated produces gametes of the genotype capital T and small t in equal proportion. When fertilization takes place, the pollen grains of genotype capital T have a 50% chance to pollinate eggs of the genotype capital T as well as of genotype small t. Also, pollen grains of genotype small t have a 50% chance of pollinating eggs of genotype capital T as well as of genotype small t. As a result of random fertilization, 
the resultant zygotes can be of genotypes 2 capital T's, capital T small t or 2 small t's. From the Punnett square, it is easily seen that one fourth of the random fertilizations lead to 2 capital T's, half lead to capital T small t, and one fourth to 2 small t's. Though the F1 have a genotype of capital T small t, but the phenotypic character seen is tall. At F2, three fourth of the plants are tall, where some of them are two capital T's, while others are capital T small t. Externally, it is not possible to distinguish between the plants with the genotypes two capital T's and capital T small t. Hence, within the genotypic pair capital T small t, only one character capital T tall is expressed. hence the character capital t or tall is said to dominate over the other allele small t or dwarf character it is thus due to this dominance of one character over the other that all the f1 are tall though the genotype is capital t small t and in the f2 3/4 of plants are tall though genotypically half are capital t small t and only 1/4 are two capital t's this leads to a phenotypic ratio of 3/4 tall ratio 1/4 two capital t's and half capital t small t and 1/4 small t's that is 3 ratio 1 ratio but a genotypic ratio of 1 ratio 2 ratio 1 the 1/4 ratio 1/2 ratio 1/4 ratio of two capital t's ratio capital t small t and two small t's is mathematically condensable to the form of the binomial expression ax plus by the whole square that has the gametes bearing genes capital t or small t in equal frequency of half the expression is expanded as given below half capital t plus half small t the whole square is equal to half capital t plus half small t multiplied by half capital t plus half small t which is equal to half two capital t's plus half capital t small t plus 1/4 two capital t's mendel self pollinated the f2 plants and found that the dwarf f2 plants continued to generate dwarf plants in f3 and f4 generations he concluded that the genotype of the dwarfs was homozygous two small t's what do you think he would have got had he self pollinated a tall f2 plant from the preceding paragraphs it is clear that though the genotypic ratios can be calculated using mathematical probability by simply looking at the phenotype of a dominant trait it is not possible to know the genotypic composition that is for example whether a tall plant from f1 or f2 has two capital t or capital t small t composition cannot be predicted Therefore to determine the genotype of a tall plant at F2 Mendel crossed the tall plant from F2 with a dwarf plant this he called a test cross in a typical test cross an organism p plants here showing a dominant phenotype and whose genotype is to be determined is crossed with a recessive parent instead of self crossing The progenies of such a cross can be easily analyzed to predict the genotype of the test organism. Figure 5.5 shows the results of a typical test cross where the violet color flower capital W is dominant over white color flower small w. Using Punnett square, try to find out the nature of offspring of a test cross. What ratio did you get? 
using the genotypes of this cross can you give a general definition for a test cross based on his observations on monohybrid crosses mendel proposed two general rules to consolidate his understanding of inheritance in monohybrid crosses today these rules are called the principles or laws of inheritance the first law or law of dominance and the second law or law of segregation 5.2.1 law of dominance 1 characters are controlled by discrete units called factors 2 factors occur in pairs 3 in a dissimilar pair of factors one member of the pair dominates dominant the other recessive the law of dominance is used to explain the expression of only one of the parental characters in a monohybrid cross in the f1 and the expression of both in the f2 it also explains the proportion of 3 ratio 1 obtained at the f2 5.2.2 law of segregation this law is based on the fact that the alleles do not show any blending and that both the characters are recovered as such in the f2 generation though one of these is not seen at the f1 stage though the parents contain two alleles during gamete formation the factors or alleles of a pair segregate from each other such that a gamete receives only one of the two factors of course a homozygous parent produces all gametes that are similar while a heterozygous one produces two kinds of gametes each having one allele with equal proportion 5.2.2.1 incomplete dominance when experiments on peas were repeated using other traits in other plants it was found that sometimes the f1 had a phenotype that did not resemble either of the two parents and was in between the two the inheritance of flower color in the dog flower snapdragon or antirrhinum is a good example to understand incomplete dominance in a cross between true breeding red flowered two capital r's and true breeding white flowered plants small two r's the f1 capital r small r was pink when the f1 was self pollinated the f2 resulted in the following ratio 1 two capital r's red ratio 2 capital r small r pink ratio 1 two small r's white here the genotype ratios were exactly as we would expect in any mendelian monohybrid cross but the phenotype ratios had changed from 3 ratio 1 dominant ratio recessive ratio what happened was that capital r was not completely dominant over small r and this made it possible to distinguish capital r small r as pink from two capital r's red and small r's white explanation of concept of dominance what exactly is dominance why are some alleles dominant and some recessive to tackle these questions we must understand what a gene does every gene as you know by now contains the information to express a particular trait In a diploid organism there are two copies of each gene that is as a pair of alleles Now these two alleles need not always be identical as in heterozygote One of them may be different due to some changes that it has undergone about which you will read further on and in the next chapter which modifies the information that particular allele contains let's take an example of a gene that contains the information for producing an enzyme now there are two copies of this gene the two allelic 
forms let us assume as is more common that the normal allylic produces the normal enzyme that is needed for the transformation of a substrate capital S theoretically the modified allyl could be responsible for the production of one the normal less efficient enzyme or two a non functional enzyme or three no enzyme at all in the first case the modified allyl is equivalent to the unmodified allyl that is it will produce the same phenotype trait that is result in the transformation of substrate capital s such equivalent allyl pairs are very common but if the allyl produces a non functional enzyme or no enzyme the phenotype may be affected the phenotype trait will only be dependent on the functioning of the unmodified allyl the unmodified functioning allyl which represents the original phenotype is the dominant allyl and the modified allyl is generally recessive allyl hence in the example above the recessive trait is seen due to non functional enzyme or because no enzyme is produced 5.2.2.2 codominance till now we were discussing crosses where the f1 resembled either of the two parents dominance or was in between incomplete dominance but in the case of codominance the f1 generation resembles both parents a good example is different types of red blood cells that determine abo blood grouping in human beings abo blood groups are controlled by the gene i the plasma membrane of the red blood cells has sugar polymers that protrude from its surface and the kind of sugar is controlled by the gene the gene i has three alleles i power a i power b and small i the alleles i power a and i power b produce a slightly different form of the sugar while allele small i does not produce any sugar because humans are diploid organisms each person possesses any two of the three gene i alleles i power a and i power b are completely dominant over small i in other words when i power a and small i are present only i power a expresses because small i does not produce any sugar and when i power b and small i are present i power b expresses but when i power a and i power b are present together they both express their own types of sugar this is because of codominance hence red blood cells have both a and b types of sugar since there are three different alleles there are six different combinations of these three alleles that are possible and therefore a total of six different genotypes of the human abo blood types how many phenotypes are possible do you realize that the example of abo blood groupings can also provide a good example of multiple alleles here you can see that there are more than two that is three alleles governing the same character since in an individual only two alleles are present multiple alleles can be found only when population studies are made occasionally a single gene product may produce more than one effect for example starch synthesis in pea seeds is controlled by one gene it has two alleles capital b and small b starch is synthesized effectively by two capital b's homozygotes and therefore large starch grains are produced in contrast two small b's homozygotes have lesser efficiency in starch synthesis and produce smaller starch grains 
after maturation of the seeds two capital b's seeds are round and the two small b's seeds are wrinkled heterozygotes produce round seeds and so capital b seems to be the dominant allele but the starch grains produced are of intermediate size in capital b small b seeds so if starch grain size is considered as the phenotype then from this angle the alleles show incomplete dominance therefore dominance is not an autonomous feature of a gene or the product that it has information for it depends as much on the gene product and the production of a particular phenotype from this product as it does on the particular phenotype that we choose to examine in case more than one phenotype is influenced by the same gene 5.3 inheritance of two genes mendel also worked with and crossed pea plants that differed in two characters as is seen in the cross between a pea plant that has seeds with yellow color and round shape and one that had seeds of green color and wrinkled shape mendel found that the seeds resulting from the crossing of the parents had yellow colored and round shaped seeds here you can tell which of the characters in the pairs yellow green color and round wrinkled shape was dominant thus yellow color was dominant over green and round shape dominant over wrinkled these results were identical to those that he got when he made separate monohybrid crosses between yellow and green seeded plants and between round and wrinkled seeded plants let us use the genotypic symbols capital y for dominant yellow seed color and small y for recessive green seed color capital r for round shaped seeds and small r for wrinkled seed shape the genotype of the parents can be written as two capital r's two capital y's and two small r's two small y's the cross between the two plants can be written down as in figure 5.7 showing the genotypes of the parent plants the gametes capital r capital y and small r small y unite on fertilization to produce the f1 hybrid capital r small r capital y small y when mendel self hybridized the f1 plants he found that the 3/4 of the f2 plants had yellow seeds and 1/4 had green the yellow and green segregated in a 3 ratio 1 ratio round and wrinkled seed shape also segregated in a 3 ratio 1 ratio just like a monohybrid cross 5.3.1 law of independent assortment in the dihybrid cross the phenotypes round yellow wrinkled yellow round green and wrinkled the green appear in the ratio 9 is to 3 is to 3 is to 1 such a ratio was observed for several pairs of characters that mendel studied the ratio of 9 is to 3 is to 3 is to 1 can be derived as a combination series of 3 yellow is to 1 green with 3 round is to 1 wrinkled this derivation can be written as follows 3 is to 1 wrinkled bracket 3 yellow is to 1 green bracket equals 9 round yellow is to 3 wrinkled yellow is to 3 round green is to 1 wrinkled green based upon such observations on dihybrid crosses crosses between plants differing in two traits Mendel proposed a second set of generalizations that we call Mendel's law of independent assortment. The law states that when two pairs of traits are combined in a hybrid, segregation of one pair of characters is independent of the other pair of characters. The Punnett square 
can be effectively used to understand the independent segregation of the two pairs of genes during meiosis and the production of eggs and pollen in the F1 capital R small r capital Y small y plant consider the segregation of one pair of genes capital R and small r 50% of the gametes have the gene capital R and the other 50% have small r now besides each gamete having either capital R or small r it should also have the allele capital Y or small y the important thing to remember here is that segregation of 50% capital R and 50% small r is independent from the segregation of 50% capital Y and 50% small y. Therefore, 50% of the small r bearing gametes has capital Y and the other 50% has small y. Similarly, 50% of the capital R bearing gametes has capital Y and the other 50% has small y. Thus, there are four genotypes of the gametes, four types of pollen and four types of eggs. The four types are capital R capital Y, capital R small y, small r capital Y and small r small y each with a frequency of 25% or one-fourth of the total gametes produced. When you write down the four types of eggs and pollen on the two sides of a Punnett square, it is very easy to derive the composition of the zygotes that give rise to the F2 plants. Although there are 16 squares, how many different types of genotypes and phenotypes are formed? Note them down in the format given. Can you, using the Punnett square data work, out the genotypic ratio at the F2 stage and fill in the format given? Is the genotypic ratio also 9 is to 3 is to 3 is to 1? 5.3.2 Chromosomal Theory of Inheritance Mendel published his work on inheritance of characters in 1865, but for several reasons it remained unrecognized till 1900. Firstly, communication was not easy, as it is now, in those days and his work could not be widely publicized. Secondly, his concept of genes, or factors in Mendel's words, as stable and discrete units, that combined the expression of traits and of the pairs of alleles which did not blend with each other was not accepted by his contemporaries as an explanation for the apparently continuous variation seen in nature. Thirdly, Mendel's approach of using mathematics to explain biological phenomena was totally new and unacceptable to many of the biologists at the time. Finally, Though Mendel's work suggested that factors, genes, were discrete units, he could not provide any physical proof for the existence of factors or say what they were made of. In 1900, three scientists, De Vries, Corrins, and von Schermack, independently rediscovered Mendel's results on the inheritance of characters. Also, by this time, due to advancements in microscopy that were taking place, scientists were able to carefully observe cell division. This led to the discovery of structures in the nucleus that appeared to double and divide just before each cell division. These were called chromosomes, colored bodies as they were visually by staining. By 1902, the chromosome movement during meiosis had been worked out. Walter Sutton and Theodore Bovary noted that the behavior of chromosomes was parallel to the behavior of genes and used chromosome movement to explain Mendel's laws. Recall that you have studied the behavior of chromosomes during mitosis, equational division and during meiosis, reduction division. The important thing to remember are that chromosomes as well as genes occur in pairs. 
The two alleles of a gene pair are located on homologous sites on homologous chromosomes. During anaphase of meiosis 1, the two chromosome pairs can align the metaphase plate independently of each other. To understand this, compare the chromosomes of four different colors in the left and right columns. In the left column, possibility 1, orange and green is segregating together. But in the right hand column, possibility 2, the orange chromosome is segregating with the red chromosome. Sutton and Bovary argue that the pairing and separation of a pair of chromosomes would lead to the segregation of a pair of factors they carried. Sutton united the knowledge of chromosomal segregation with Mendelian principles and called it the chromosomal theory of inheritance. Following the synthesis of ideas, experimental verification of the chromosomal theory of inheritance by Thomas Hunt Morgan and his colleagues led to discovering the basis for the variation that sexual reproduction produced. Morgan worked with the tiny fruit flies, Drosophilia menalogaster, which were found very suitable for such studies. They could be grown on simple synthetic medium in the laboratory. They complete their life cycle in about two weeks and a single mating could produce large number of progeny flies. Also, there was a clear differentiation of sexes. The male and female flies are easily distinguishable. Also, it has many types of hereditary variations that can be seen with low power microscopes. 5.3.3 Linkage and Recombination Morgan carried out several dihybrid crosses in Drosophila to study genes that were sex linked. The crosses were similar to dihybrid crosses carried out by Mendel in peas. For example, Morgan hybridized yellow-bodied, white-eyed females to brown-bodied, red-eyed males and intercoursed their F1 progeny. He observed that the two genes that did not segregate independently of each other and the F2 ratio deviated very significantly from the 9 is to 3 is to 3 is to 1 ratio expected when the two genes are independent. Morgan and his group knew that the genes were located on the X chromosome and saw quickly that when the two genes in a dihybrid cross were situated on the same chromosome, the proportion of parental gene combinations were very much higher than the non-parental type. Morgan attributed this due to the physical association or linkage of the two genes and coined the term linkage to describe this physical association of genes on a chromosome and the term recombination to describe the generation of non-parental gene combinations. Morgan and his group also found that even when genes were grouped on the same chromosome, some genes were very tightly linked, showed very low combination, while others were loosely linked, showed higher recombination. For example, he found that the genes white and yellow were very tightly linked and showed only 1.3% free combination while white and miniature wing showed 37.2% recombination. His student Alfred Struvent used the frequency of combination between gene pairs on the same chromosome as a measure of the distance between genes and mapped their position on the chromosome. Today, genetic maps are extensively used as a starting point in the sequencing of whole genomes as was done in the case of human genome sequencing project described later. 5.4 Polygenic Inheritance Mendel's studies mainly describe those traits that have distinct alternate forms such as flower color which are either purple or white. But if you look around you, 
you will find that are many traits which are not so distinct in their occurrence and are spread across a gradient for example in humans we don't just have tall or short people as two distinct alternatives but a whole range of possible heights such traits are generally controlled by three or more genes and are thus called the polygenic traits besides the involvement of multiple genes polygenic inheritance also takes into account the influence of environment human skin color is another classic example for this in a polygenic trait the phenotype reflects the contribution of each allele that is the effect of each allele is additive to understand this better let us assume that three genes a b c control skin color in human with the dominant forms a b and c responsible for dark skin and the recessive forms small a small b and small c for light skin color the genotype with all the dominant alleles two capital a's two capital b's two capital c's will have the darkest skin color and with that all the recessive alleles two small a's two small b's two small c's will have the lightest skin color as expected the genotype with three dominant alleles and their three recessive alleles will have an intermediate skin color in this manner the number of each type of alleles in the genotype would determine the lightness or darkness of the skin in an individual 5.5 pleiotropy we have so far seen the effect of a gene on a single phenotype or trait there are however instances where a single gene can exhibit multiple phenotypic expression such a gene is called a pleiotropic gene the underlying mechanism of pleiotropy in most cases is the effect of a gene on metabolic pathways which contribute towards different phenotypes an example of this is the disease phenylketronia which occurs in humans this disease is caused by mutation in the gene that codes for the enzyme phenyl alanine hydroxylase single gene mutation this manifests itself through phenotypic expression characterized by mental retardation and a reduction in hair and skin pigmentation 5.6 sex determination the mechanism of sex determination has always been a puzzle before the geneticists the initial clue about the genetic chromosomal mechanism of sex determination can be traced back to some of the experiments carried out in insects in fact the cytological observations made in a number of insects led to the development of the concept of genetic chromosomal basis of sex determination henking 1891 could trace a specific nuclear structure all through the spermatogenesis in a few insects and it was also observed by him that 50% of the sperms received this structure after spermatogenesis whereas the other 50% sperm did not receive it henking gave a name to this structure as the x body but he could not explain its significance further investigations by other scientists led to the conclusion that x body of henking was in fact a chromosome and that is why it was given the name x chromosome it was also observed that in a large number of insects the mechanism of sex determination is of the x o type that is all eggs bear an additional x chromosome besides the other chromosomes autosomes on the other hand some of the sperms bear the x chromosome whereas some do not x fertilized by sperm 
having an X chromosome become females and those fertilized by sperms that do not have an X chromosome become males. Do you think the number of chromosomes in the male and female are equal? Due to the involvement of the X chromosome in the determination of sex, it was designated to be the sex chromosome and the rest of the chromosomes were named as autosomes. Grasshopper is an example of XO type of sex determination in which the males have only one X chromosome besides the autosomes, whereas females have a pair of X chromosomes. These observations led to the investigation of a number of species to understand the mechanism of sex determination. In a number of other insects and mammals including man, XY type of sex determination is seen where both male and female have same number of chromosomes. Among the males, an X chromosome is present but it is counterpart is distinctly smaller and called the Y chromosome. Females, however, have a pair of X chromosomes. Both males and females bear the same number of autosomes. Hence, the males have autosomes plus XY while females have autosomes plus XX. In human beings, in Drosophila, the males have one X and one Y, whereas females have a pair of XX chromosomes besides autosomes. In the above description, you have studied about two types of sex determining mechanisms, that is XO type and XY type. But in both cases, males produce two different types of gametes. A either with or without X chromosome or B, some gametes with X chromosome and some with Y chromosome. Such types of sex determination mechanism is designated to be the example of male heterogamity. In some organisms, example birds, a different mechanism of sex determination is observed. In this case, the total number of chromosomes is same in both males and females, but two different types of gametes in terms of sex chromosomes are produced by females, that is, female heterogamity. In order to have a distinction with the mechanisms of sex determination described earlier, the two different sex chromosomes of a female bird has been designated to be the Z and W chromosomes. In these organisms, the females have one Z and one W chromosome, whereas males have a pair of Z chromosomes besides the autosomes. 5.6.1 Sex Determination in Humans It has already been mentioned that the sex determining mechanisms in case of humans is XY type. Out of the 23 pairs of chromosomes present, 22 pairs are exactly the same in both males and females. These are autosomes. A pair of X chromosomes are present in the females, whereas the presence of X, Y chromosome are determinant of the male characteristic. During spermatogenesis among males, two types of gametes are produced. 50% of the total sperm produced carry the X chromosome and the rest 50% has Y chromosome, besides the autosomes. Females, however, produce only one type of ovum with an X chromosome. There is an equal probability of fertilization of the ovum with the sperm carrying either X or Y chromosome. In case the ovum fertilizes with the sperm carrying X chromosome, the zygote develops into a female XX and the fertilization of ovum with Y chromosome carrying sperm results into male offspring. Thus, it is evident that it is genetic makeup of the sperm that determines the sex of the child. 
It is also evident that in each pregnancy there is always 50% probability of either a male or a female child. It is unfortunate that in our society women are blamed for giving birth to female children and have been ostracized and ill-treated because of this false notion. 5.6.2 Sex determination in honeybee. The sex determination in honeybee is based on the number of sets of chromosomes an individual receives. An offspring formed from the union of a sperm and an egg develops as a female, queen or worker, and an unfertilized egg develops as a male, drone, by means of parthenogenesis. This means that the males have half the number of chromosomes than that of a female. The females are diploid, having 32 chromosomes, and males are haploid, that is, having 16 chromosomes. This is called as haploid diploid sex determination system and has special characteristic features such as the male produce sperms by mitosis, they do not have father and thus cannot have sons, but have a grandfather and can have grandsons. How is sex determination mechanism different in the birds? Is the sperm or the egg responsible for the sex of the chicks? 5.7 Mutation Mutation is a phenomena which results in alteration of DNA sequences and consequently results in changes in the genotype and the phenotype of an organism. In addition to the recombination, mutation is another phenomena that leads to variation in DNA. As you will learn in Chapter 6, one DNA helix runs continuously from one end to the other in each chromatid in a highly supercoiled form. Therefore, loss, deletions or gain, insertion, duplication of a segment of DNA result in altercation in chromosomes. Since genes are known to be located on chromosomes, alteration in chromosomes results in abnormalities or aberrations. Chromosomal aberrations are commonly observed in cancer cells. In addition to the above, mutation also arises due to change in a single base pair of DNA. This is known as point mutation. A classical example of such a mutation is sickle cell anemia. Deletions and insertions of base pair of DNA causes frame shift mutations. See Chapter 6. The mechanism of mutation is beyond the scope of this discussion at this level. However, there are many chemical and physical factors that induce mutations. These are referred to as mutagens. UV radiations can cause mutations in organisms. It is a mutagen. 5.8 Genetic Disorders 5.8.1 Pedigree analysis. The idea that disorders are inherited has been prevailing in the human society since long. This was based on the heritability of certain characteristic features in families. After the rediscovery of Mendel's work, the practice of analyzing inheritance patterns of traits in human beings began. Since it is evident that control crosses that can be performed in pea plant or some other organisms are not possible in case of human beings, study of the family history about inheritance of a particular trait provides an alternative. Such an analysis of traits in a several of generations of a family is called the pedigree analysis. In the pedigree analysis, the inheritance of a particular trait is represented in the family tree over generations. In human genetics, pedigree study provides a strong tool which is utilized to trace the inheritance of a specific trait, abnormality or disease. 
Some of the important standard symbols used in the pedigree analysis have been shown in figure 5.13. As you have studied in this chapter, each and every feature in an organism is controlled by one or the other gene located on the DNA present in the chromosome. DNA is the carrier of genetic information. It is hence transmitted from one generation to the other without any change or alteration. However, changes or alterations do take place occasionally. Such an alteration or change in the genetic material is referred to as mutation. A number of disorders in human beings have been found to be associated with the inheritance of changed or altered genes or chromosomes. 5.8.2 Mendelian Disorders Broadly, genetic disorders may be grouped into two categories, Mendelian Disorders and Chromosomal Disorders. Mendelian disorders are mainly determined by alteration or mutation in the single gene. These disorders are transmitted to the offspring on the same lines as we have studied in the principle of inheritance. The pattern of inheritance of such Mendelian disorders can be traced in a family by the pedigree analysis. Most common and prevalent Mendelian disorders are hemophilia, cystic fibrosis, sickle cell anemia, color blindness, phenylketonuria, thalassemia, etc. It is important to mention here that such Mendelian disorders may be dominant or recessive. By pedigree analysis, one can easily understand whether the trait in question is dominant or recessive. Similarly, the trait may also be linked to the sex chromosome as in the case of hemophilia. It is evident that this X-linked recessive trait shows transmission from carrier female to male progeny. A representative pedigree is shown in figure 5.14 for dominant and recessive traits. Discuss with your teacher and design pedigrees for characters linked to both autosomes and sex chromosomes. Color blindness. It is a sex-linked recessive disorder due to effect in either green or red cone of eye resulting in failure to discriminate between red and green color. This defect is due to mutation in certain genes present in the X chromosome. It occurs in about 8% of males and only about 0.4% of females. This is because the genes that have led only to green and red color blindness are on the X chromosome. Males have only one X chromosome and females have two. The son of a woman who carries the gene has a 50% chance of being color blind. The mother is not herself colorblind because the gene is recessive. That means its effect is suppressed by her matching dominant normal gene. A daughter will not normally be colorblind unless her mother is a carrier and her father is colorblind. Hemophilia This sex-linked recessive disease which shows its transmission from unaffected carrier female to some of the male progeny has been widely studied. In this disease, a single protein that is a part of the cascade of proteins involved in the clotting of blood is affected. Due to this, in an affected individual, a simple cut will result in non-stop bleeding. The heterozygous female carrier for hemophilia may transmit the disease to sons. The possibility of a female becoming hemophilic is extremely rare because mother of such a female has to be at least carrier and the father should be hemophilic, unviable in the later stage of life. The family of pedigree of Queen Victoria shows a number of hemophilic descendants as she was a carrier of the disease. Sickle cell anemia 
This is an autosome linked recessive trait that can be transmitted from parents to the offspring when both the partners are carrier for the gene or heterozygous. The disease is controlled by a single pair of allele capital H small b power a and capital H small b power s. Out of the three possible genotypes, only homozygous individuals for capital H small b power s bracket capital H small b power s capital H small b power s show the diseased phenotype heterozygous bracket capital H small b power a capital H small b power s individuals appear apparently unaffected but they are carrier of the disease as there is 50% probability of transmission of the mutant gene to the progeny thus exhibiting sickle cell trait this defect is caused by the substitution of glutamic acid glu by valine val at the sixth position of the beta globin chain of the hemoglobin molecule the substitution of amino acid in the globin protein results due to the single base substitution at the sixth codon of the beta globin gene from gag to gug the mutant hemoglobin molecule undergoes polymeritization under low oxygen tension causing the change in the shape of the rbc from bioconcave disc to elongated sickle like structure phenylketonuria this inborn error of metabolism is also inherited as the autosomal recessive trait the affected individual lacks an enzyme that converts the amino acid phenylalanine into tyrosine as a result of the phenylalanine is accumulated and converted into phenylpyruvic acid and other derivatives accumulation of these in brain results in mental retardation these are also excreted through urine because of its poor absorption by kidney thalassemia this is also an autosome linked recessive blood disease transmitted from parents to the offspring when both the partners are unaffected carrier for the gene or heterozygous the defect could be due to either mutation or deletion which ultimately results in reduced rate of synthesis of one of the globin chains alpha and beta chains that make up hemoglobin This causes the formation of abnormal hemoglobin molecules resulting into anemia which is characteristic of the disease. Thalassemia can be classified according to the chain of hemoglobin molecule is affected. In alpha thalassemia production of alpha globin chain is affected while in beta thalassemia production of beta globin chain is affected. Uh, alpha thalassemia is controlled by two closely linked genes HBA1 and HBA2 on chromosome 16 of each parent and it is observed due to mutation or deletion of one or more of the four genes the more genes affected the less alpha globin molecules produced the beta thalassemia is controlled by a single gene HBB on chromosome 11 of each parent occurs due to mutation of one or both the genes thalassemia differs from sickle cell anemia in that the former is a quantitative problem of synthesizing too few globin molecules while the latter is a qualitative problem of synthesizing an incorrectly functioning globin 5.8.3 chromosomal disorders the chromosomal disorders on the other hand are caused due to absence or excess or abnormal arrangement of one or more chromosomes failure of segregation of chromatids during cell division cycle results in the gain or loss of chromosomes called aneuploidy 
for example in down syndromes results in the gain of extra copy of chromosome 21 similarly turner syndrome results due to loss of an x chromosome in human females failure of cytokinesis after telophase stage of cell division results in an increase in a whole set of chromosomes in an organism and this phenomena is known as polyploidy this condition is often seen in plants. The total number of chromosomes in a normal human cell is 46, 23 pairs. Out of these, 22 pairs are autosomes and one pair of chromosomes are sex chromosomes. Sometimes though rarely, either an additional copy of a chromosome may be included in an individual or an individual may lack one of the pair of chromosomes. These situations are known as trisomy or monosomy of a chromosome respectively. Such a situation leads to a very serious consequence in the individual. Downs syndrome, Turner syndrome, Kleinfelter syndrome are common examples of chromosomal disorders. Downs syndrome the cause of this genetic disorder is the presence of an additional copy of chromosome number 21, triosomy of 21. This disorder was first described by Langdon Down, 1866. The affected individual is short statured with small round head, furrowed tongue and partially open mouth. Palm is broad with characteristic palm trees. Physical, psychomotor, and mental development is retarded. Kleinfelter syndrome. This genetic disorder is also caused due to the presence of an additional copy of X chromosome, resulting into a karyotype of 47, XXY. Such an individual has an overall masculine development, however, the feminine development, development of breasts, that is gynocostomatia is also expressed. Such individuals are sterile. Turner syndrome. Such a disorder is caused due to the absence of one of the X chromosomes that is 45 with X0. Such females are sterile as ovaries are rudimentary besides other features including lack of other secondary sexual characters. Summary Genetics is a branch of biology which deals with principles of inheritance and its practices. Progeny resembling the parents in morphological and physiological features has attracted the attention of many biologists. Mendel was the first to study the phenomena systematically. While studying the pattern of inheritance in pea plants of contrasting characters, Mendel proposed the principles of inheritance, which are today referred to as Mendel's law of inheritance. He proposed that the factors, later named as genes, regulating the characters are found in pairs known as alleles. He observed that the expression of the characters in the offspring follow a definite pattern in different first generations F1 and second, F2, and so on. Some characters are dominant over others. The dominant characters are expressed when factors are heterozygous condition, law of dominance. The recessive characters are only expressed in homozygous conditions. The characters never blend in heterozygous conditions. A recessive character that was not expressed in heterozygous condition may be expressed again when it becomes homozygous. Hence, characters segregate while formation of gametes law of segregation. Not all characters show true dominance. Some characters show incomplete and some show codominance. When Mendel studied the inheritance of two characters together, it was found that the factors independently assort and combine in all permutations and combinations law of independent assortment. 
Different combinations of gametes are theoretically represented in a square tabular form known as Punnett square. The factors now known as gene on chromosomes regulating the characters are called the genotype and the physical expression of the characters is called phenotype. After knowing that the genes are located on the chromosomes, a good correlation was drawn between Mendel's laws, segregation and assortment of chromosomes during meiosis. The Mendel's laws were extended in the form of chromosomal theory of inheritance. Later, it was found that the Mendel's laws of independent assortment does not hold true for the genes that were located on the same chromosomes. These genes were called as linked genes. Closely located genes assorted together and distantly located genes due to recombination assorted independently. Linkage maps, therefore, corresponded to arrangement of genes on a chromosome. Many genes were linked to sexes also and called as sex-linked genes. These two sexes, male and female, were found to have a set of chromosomes which were common and another set which was different. The chromosomes which were different in two sexes were named as sex chromosomes. The remaining set was named as autosomes. In humans, a normal female has 22 pairs of autosomes and a pair of sex chromosomes, XX. A male has 22 pairs of autosomes and a pair of sex chromosomes as XY. In chicken, sex chromosomes in males are ZZ and in females are ZW. Mutation is defined as change in genetic material. A point mutation is a change of single base pair in DNA. Sickle cell anemia is caused due to change of one base in the gene coding for beta chain of hemoglobin. Inheritable mutations can be studied by generating a pedigree of a family. Some mutations involve changes in whole sets of chromosomes, polyploidy, or change in subset of chromosome number, aneuploidy. This helped in understanding the mutational basis of genetic disorders. Down's syndrome is due to trisomy of chromosome 21 where there is an extra copy of chromosome 21 and consequently the total number of chromosomes become 47. In Turner syndrome, one X chromosome is missing and the sex chromosome is as XO. And in Kleinfelter syndrome, the condition is XXY. These can be easily studied by analysis of